What are you doing? What are you doing, Bruno? Really? I don't think that's for you. Come here. You silly boy. Bruno, drop it. Gosh, you're so stubborn. Hey guys, welcome back to Canis Get Out. It is a beautiful day today. No complaints about the weather. It's like inside weather outside. It's, I love it. Like upper 60s, low 70s. It's gonna get a little bit warmer today, but right now it's perfect. And this time of year, the wildlife has been active out here on Shady Acres. Last night we had a little scare, had a little bump in the night. <laughs> Quite a literally. literal bump. <laughs> yeah, I was at one end of the camper. Shannon was all the way at the other. You know, we're so far away from one another. It's a whopping, you know, like 30 feet. What? Yeah, but not between. It's like 10 feet between us. <laughs> <laughs> but man, we heard a thud and both of us at the same time. Oh, speaking of which, I was a little loud. Goats heard me. That's no, okay. They want to get out. They are ready. But we both jumped up, said, what in the world was that? Got our appropriate stuff to go outside and check it out. You know, the stuff. Shoes. And Shoes, yeah, <laughs> shoes. That's what it is. For me, it was shoes. <laughs> but in that big oak right over there, directly across from the camper, we had a stalker. Not we, but right outside the camper, there was a guinea, and she was scared. She was lost in the dark. I know, I think we've shown you previous videos where you can sneak up on the guineas at night. They don't move. You can touch them. They get scared and flutter. One of them attacked me in the night one time. They are so disoriented and they no longer stay in the run. Remember, they switched to that tree over there when the nest was over here. But now I don't really know. Last night, I think they were somewhere over here. Shannon thinks they're somewhere over here. I don't really know, guys. But so I, I don't know if the owl was just trying to find a nest or what, but we saw him or her stalking from that branch right there, which historically we've told you about barn owls and barred owls we have each we got a screecher and we got the hooters and those are the different noises they make look them up you'll know what i'm talking about and they have all been on that very branch watching us before and they are both in a pair so one of them will be there sometimes another one's over here but we were nervous and we did the best we could there it turns out there was another guinea over here so we had one that was over in front of the camper one that was over here and some were out here very, very quietly chirping to tell the guineas like, hey, we're over here, but be quiet because I think the owl knows too. <laughs> so we stayed outside with them for a while, kind of tried to get them walking this direction. I tried to touch one just for the fun of it. She didn't like it, uh, but they don't take off. They can't go anywhere. They can't see well enough. So the two of them went side by side and walked over there to be with the other guineas. And Shannon just reported to me all seven guineas are alive this morning. Thank goodness. Yep, makes yeah. me happy. <laughs> so I don't know, but yeah, the owls are out. I got startled the other day by a snake. I was using my tractor, getting ready for the chicken coop. Yeah, that's lumber back there. And a stinking snake, big old black rat snake. Had to Google it, of course, after I chased it into the woods. So everything's here, it's all out. Speaking of all being out, I think these critters are ready to all be out. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. Hey, look, before we get too close, you guys know Shannon and I spy on our animals on the cameras. You see who that is up on the haircut? We're seeing Larry reestablish his position as mama's favorite, or at least mama's boy. Look at the new shelter, babe. With Miss Blue. Look at the new shelter. You don't see nothing in here. <laughs> All the wild ones are out there fighting each other. There's a waggy tail and some horns in here. I don't know what you're talking about. He's so funny. Ouija boy. Oh my gosh. You guys are adorable. I hate that we have to tell you so many stories, but the reality is as things happen, if we weren't walking around with our cameras out full time, you know, we'd have hours and hours and hours of footage. 
So when things happened like the owls and the guineas last night, well, it was also really dark, so you couldn't see anything. Well, but, I originally went outside without even grabbing my phone. So I, like, I couldn't even get the owl. I had to go back in and get my phone. Yeah, that's not one of the tools I grab when I hear a bump no. in the night outside the camper. No. My phone is one of the last <laughs> things I think about. We gotta assess the situation, you know, stop any threat, and then the phones come out. What do you think, guys? Spruce, I was kind of leading into that for a reason, bud. Yeah, what the reason? Well, you got a little unruly with me last night. I don't oh, even think yeah. I told mom the whole story. I haven't heard this story We yet. don't need to tell the story. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Hmm. Uh-huh. We had a really good grazing last night. The weather was great. We got everybody out. And I got a story about Hercules <laughs> and Bruno. Because if you saw our last video, you guys commented a lot about our interaction between Hercules and Bruno. And I'm going to try to be... We'll talk about it. But we had a wonderful grazing last night, and you guys know, we love all of our animals. So I came in to give Mr. Herc some extra special attention, and we hung out for quite a long time. Stayed over here in the nursery. Hi, Spruce and Loose. Yeah, uh-huh. This one's about you, buddy. And of course, Mr. Herc. <laughs> my buddy, my big boy. Oh, it's a boy. Mr. Herc was great for me the whole time. But when it's getting dark, you know, I want to say we were, we were pretty close to dark. When it's getting dark, you just kind of got to be mindful of how you approach the goats. And, you know, the goats aren't active with you in the dark. They all just stay very still right where they are, except for bottle baby spruce. What are you talking about, Dad? Yeah, you, mister. He's an entitled little goat. Just ask him. We had the crew that was up here. Hi, buddy. I think it was Mama and her boys. Larry, are we disrupting your nap, big guy? Hair Bear, Koopa Loop, Mama, Little Mario, Ouija Ouija. Hey, big guy. Hey, big guy. How are you today? Look at this crew. Blue, you've got them so trained, sweetheart. Hey, do you guys want to go graze before we get the grain out? Huh? Grazy Daisy? You're one of the best, aren't you? Got a tick on your ear we gotta get off of you. Earl Man, Dookie, my dear bluesy. You so come a long way, pretty girl. Proud of you. Yeah, it's a pretty girl, huh? So anyway, I was in here with all the goats and Mr. Spruce was out here on the spool. All the other goats were in here, everybody, except for Mama and her crew that were up there. So Blue's entire crew is in here. Ouija, I think, was down here. Spruce was right here, and I tried to come in. I was loving on these guys and came out, scratched on Spruce, started to go back to the other goats, and Spruce said, no, no, it's my turn. And I'm not going to lie, probably better than any other goat since Mario, he turned on me and gave me a good whack in my arm. I think I got a little bruise up here. And I don't encourage this. But I've been told this by a lot of folks that have farmed goats or raised goats or whatever that especially with your bucks, your intact goat, male goats, people told me this about Mario a lot, you've got to show them who the boss is. And I don't like to be that way with the animals with my hands. I prefer to use, you know, tools, not tools like, you know, knives, things like that, but like an e-collar or something that is not going to be me versus them. But when he attacked me personally, I flipped him over, pinned him down, <laughs> had all four legs up in the air and I had his head held down and guys don't, I, it's not animal cruelty, I promise. He's 100% fine, we're on good terms, I know it, but he got thrown down, he made some noises that he's never made before and I thought they were just him saying sorry. Is that right Spruce? Yeah, sorry, whatever, whatever. So no, I'm not encouraging that you physically manhandle your goats. But if that were not me and that were Shannon, you know, I outweigh Shannon by quite a bit. That would have been a totally different scenario. So by doing that, once he stood back up, of course I stayed with him. I didn't yell at him. I didn't get, even have to get verbally stern with him. I just had to treat him like they treat each other. And he looked at me and was like, okay, okay, took it a little far. So it worked out really well. He was fine. I stayed there and loved on him some more. Herc came over to see what was going on because he heard the commotion and peace was restored. But you do need to be mindful. If anybody out there is crazy enough to have gone and gotten goats, and I know you're out there because you guys have commented that, 
just be aware that they're still animals and they have horns and they've got a lot of muscle up in these necks so just keep an eye out and watch yourself because they're not they're not trying to hurt me that he just wanted attention and that was his way of telling me speaking of which <laughs> hey this is my least favorite game you guys play well it's our favorite so <laughs> come on Ouija think you can get me think you can get me huh Come on, Ouija. Think you can get in here, boyfriend? No way. No way. No. Don't you tear up my shelter, young man. Don't do it, Ouija. I know you're thinking about it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Spruce, I like my legs. Let's leave them alone. Yeah, yeah, get out of my way. I don't know why we all stop. This is like a new thing. Come on, thing. guys. We all Go stop on. in the gate. Is it because we're not coming out with you? I'll come out with you. Well, they do know that there's a food scoop in here with grain in it. And so, like Ouija, he would go and knock it down when I used to keep it on that lower post. Go on, buddy. I'm not going to feed anybody grain without you. Go on. Get, 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 go. Good job, Blues Crew number two. Did Dookie already make it out? Yep. Oh, with Big Brother Larry. Koopa's over here trying to eat on this branch and Weech keeps rubbing his horns on it. <laughs> it's like whacking him in the face. <laughs> they, they do that on purpose. You know, I try to get them to come this way a little more often, but lately, since everything's so grown up there where we cleared it, they've been spending a lot of time up there in the edge of the woods and stuff. But I like that they help me weed eat on either side of the driveway. Yeah. Look at those balance skills. Yep, I'm, I'm balanced perfectly, Mom. I got the weight in all the right places. You know what I'm talking about? Look at it, look at that right there. Look at all that muscle. Hey, I gotta tell you guys something. I know you've been helping me clear all this, but I finally got a chance to burn it yesterday. So now I'm ready for fencing so that you guys can no longer come in here and be a part of the garden area. I know it's a disappointment to you, especially you sprucers. Yeah, a little bit. What the heck? Why I not be fenced off and nothing, Mom? I should get everywhere. No, you're not going to get in here. Uh, I don't think so. I can fly, you know. I do know that. Yeah, so for reference, guys, Shannon was out here a while it, took it smelled a long like time. smoke with all that fresh rain we've had all this grass and everything she was combating is very hardy and holding a lot of moisture yeah so everything you see right there that's every bit of two two and a half some of it three feet tall from where luigi's standing all the way down here was that very stuff and i didn't want to weed eat it i told her as like, i'm afraid if i weed eat it all this up here these are all the seeds for that grass so if i hit this and the wind catches any of that, she's gonna have a beautiful grassy garden. That I think more would like be... a beautiful weedy garden. <laughs> well, it's grass, it's grasses, you know, oh, okay. a little tall fescue and some other garbage. But yeah, that would be fun. That would be my kind of garden. I would do that. Not me. I think you took the right right path here of destruction. So I do plan on fencing this off. I know I have to have my garden fence to protect it from all the critters, not just ours, all the wild ones. So. I'm at the point now where I'm going to have to spend about $250, I did the math last night, to get T-posts, cattle panels, and we already have a gate and we already have hardware cloth. So that is my next project. And so then I will be able to start hardening off my plants and getting them out here. Unfortunately, I got to wait till I have fencing though, but I'm close. I'm making well, progress. And also you're kind of in the design phase and you got excited and were telling me about it last night. And all I heard was big fancy rectangle where before you told me your design, I thought, big rectangle. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I can't repeat the whole design you told me, so we're not going to, but once we get it up, it's gonna be good, it's gonna be functional, and I'm here My... to do whatever labor you need me to do. Thank you. My goal is to be able to put the fence up once and not have to do it again. So that's why I'm going to the distance that I am so that hopefully it'll work. Obviously, if it doesn't, then I'll revamp it a little bit but my goal is to be one and done on this so we'll see 
So this used to be in the natural path of deer. The deer would come in on the right side of our driveway from where we're standing and up to like five, six of them. We're talking old bucks that are some of them 10 point we caught on camera, uh, full adult does, fawns, the whole families would come through here. And then as we added the e-fence around Goatville, as we cleared more of this, got it to where we could mow it and everything, it kind of rerouted them to go through our property up here in the woods. But we've caught some deer on our driveway camera the last few days. And so they're kind of getting a little more used to the new layout over the past couple seasons. And so I do think if you had a garden right here, all those deer would start coming right back through here again. I agree. So yeah, we definitely got to fence it off. They're still going after these oak leaves that are dry. Yeah, I've been trying to get them to do their job here and clear all the leaves out and Quite honestly, they've done a remarkable job. Yeah, they have. Look at this. Well, and it's just been so muddy. I tried to bring the tractor down here, and I did a couple days ago, but I dug a good eight inch rut, and I was like, man, I'm just gonna have to wait for the mud to dry. But yeah, it's, it's feeling a little more solid in here. So I don't know, I may try to get in here today and finish cleaning this out a bit. I thought you were gonna work on a chicken coop today. There, there's only a few things to do out here. Well, you know, if these guys will keep eating the leaves, then maybe I'll leave it for them and then I'll come back after the chicken coop floor. Look at her mohawk. <laughs> there was a rabbit up there teasing this guy yesterday. He kept running underneath the office and Mr. Herc was just doing lap after lap. And I say yesterday because I have to go here, guys. I don't normally do this because a lot of people just take the liberty to say absolutely whatever they can type on that little keyboard. I think they're called keyboard warriors. You know who you are. It's just a thing. So I'm gonna try to be tasteful about this, but we got a lot of backlash from our training session between Hercules and Bruno that you saw in Monday's video. Today's Wednesday, just a couple days past. And I have to say, there was some really good advice if you're raising a corgi that's gonna be an inside dog, or if you get a chihuahua, or if you're in a different scenario, you're not on 20 acres, it's not a livestock guardian dog. There's a lot of variables, guys. You witnessed the third face-to-face -face interaction between Hercules and Mr. Bruno. Hercules is an LGD. He's a different kind of dog, and a lot of you, when we first got him, said, hey, you're making him too much a pet. You can't do that. He's gotta be in that pen full time. He doesn't need to be cuddled with, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's a professional dog trainer, everybody. And then there are those of you that are actual professional dog trainers and I get it, I get it. I appreciate the input. I don't appreciate the delivery sometimes. So I'm addressing that. You saw us put tension on that leash for both the dogs. You saw me praise Hercules after he didn't eat Bruno and you said, hey, don't do that because he was just aggressive toward Bruno, blah, blah, blah. You said a lot of different things. I quit reading it all to be honest. I don't know how much of this is gonna make it in the video, but I gotta get it out. Yesterday, this is one day after what you witnessed, we got out Hercules, we had Bruno out, all the goats came out, and guess what? Our training from the day prior, I was able to take Herc off his leash. He was free, and Bruno was out here. Bruno showed the respect to Hercules, didn't try to approach him, didn't try to approach the goats unless they tried to approach him, but if they approached him, Hercules didn't have anything to do with it. My point in saying all that is, there's a hundred thousand ways to train an animal. Are we doing it perfectly correct? Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Does it smell like sarcasm in here? And I know I'm only talking to 1% of you. There's a lot of you that say, hey, great job guys. It just, it takes that consistency. You know your animals, we're here to watch and thank you. But those of you that just really thought like, I'm unsubscribing, I'm never watching again. I can't believe you would do that with your animals. Bite. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Stick around, stick around. We're all learning this together. And I have to admit some of the, the no and the corrective activity that happened yesterday. So sure enough, Hercules approached Bruno and was a little aggressive about it. But instead this time I didn't have a leash on him. I had to use my verbal commands, which was a no. And he immediately stopped, turned and looked at me. 
and I praised him for that no. He looks back at Bruno and says, oh, all right, you're not a target, moved on. And he just kept going around the office, chasing the rabbit. We are out here with them every single day working on these trainings. We are with Bruno every single day, multiple times throughout the day for hours, not just getting them out to get drinks and food and go potty, but like actually working and training. And so you've got to trust that we know these animals because we do. And you know me, I talk for them, or I mean, they talk to me. Somebody's talking, but we have a pretty good feel on the pulse and what's going on between these animals. And I do truly believe that our training methods at this point, they're going really, really well. Could we do it better? Are there different systems to use? Sure, absolutely. But we are progressing very rapidly. I think we waited till the exact right age for Mr. Bruno. He's only three and a half months old. He just looks like he's way older and he acts it because he's and very mature. And we've had him for two months, which is confusing to people in my opinion. He we what, for two months? We've also had him for two months already. So we got him at four or five weeks old. And so I think because of that, you all think that we should have introduced them a lot sooner. But when we first got Bruno, he couldn't even see. He couldn't could even barely see. even like run around. He was still getting his legs under him. You could sneeze at him and the dude would tumble. That was fall. not to touch him. This is not the best time to introduce him to Herc. And so in Herc's mind as an LGD guys, things are binary. He either, it's either a threat or it's a non-threat. It's literally one or the other. That's how he sees things. He's a half Anatolian, half Great Pyrenees, and he is a natural born protector. And just like a lot of you kind of freaked out when we got a pit bull mix because of the stigma around him, yeah, they have natural innate tendencies if you feed those tendencies, but we don't. And look, right now, the guy is looking <laughs> for that threatening rabbit that lives underneath the office. Well, guess what? I'm not gonna correct him and tell him, hey, don't get that rabbit. I don't need to. It's fine. For one, he's not gonna catch a rabbit. I love that guy. He's got a big, fast top speed, but he ain't quick enough for a rabbit. But for two, it's a non-threat that he thinks is a threat. He thinks he's protecting us. What if that were something that were a threat? I want him to do that very thing. But the big praise that I gave him when he was aggressive toward Bruno was not like, hey, good job at being aggressive to Bruno. It was when he gave up. It's when he pulled back and said, oh, I don't need to protect you from this dog, correct praise. Then the next day, yesterday, when he was not on a leash, I couldn't pull him back. He goes to make that motion again, and I corrected him and said, no. Got his attention, didn't even have to use the e-collar. Didn't have to use it a single time yesterday. And he pulled off, came back, showed me the respect, and then moved on from Bruno. So what we're trying to accomplish is not like, hey, we need these two to be best friends frolicking around the trail immediately. No, I need to make sure Herc knows Bruno is a non-threat and then we will work on the friendship. If they're not best of buds, I couldn't care less. I just don't want them to kill each other or fight each other all the time. So bear with us. Hey, and you know what? Months or years down the road, if I'm wrong, guess what? You can get your little keyboard out and you can say, I told you so, told you so, and then you win. But until then, just give us a chance and hang in there. All right, I gotta go put my soapbox up. I uh, think I overexhausted that one. <laughs> hey, otherwise, those of you that are just like, hey, we're here to watch. We're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. Thank you. Well, but that's what I was gonna say is, to all of you who left very nice, encouraging comments, thank you. Yeah. To all of you that were very rude and told us everything we're doing wrong, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what you were getting ready to say at the end of that. You got the nice version. No, thank you. <laughs> hey, in all seriousness, though, uh, you know, you say what you want. I get it. And I do. We appreciate opinions. We appreciate input. We, imp we do. We appreciate experiences that you have had. But I need you to understand this 20 acres, this is new to Shannon and I. I know we've been here for a couple of years now, but not only the 20 acres, but all these different animals and everything. So we're kind of taking what we're learning from watching other people do it just like you are. And then of course we have to evaluate our own animals and we have to know what our own goals are. And we discuss these things. And sometimes you don't get to be a part of it because well, we do it all day, every day. <laughs> and you only see this much of what we do out here. And so the parts that we show you, sometimes we're vulnerable and we open ourselves up to criticism. attack. Criticism, <laughs> yeah. Criticism. Nice way to put that. And so that's part of the life, guys, and it, we're okay with it, but I have to admit that one ate at me a little bit, so I feel better.
<laughs> and I have to admit, I'm going to continue training the way we are. But just know, guys, you could show me any training session, no matter how pro level, no matter how good the dog is, new the dog is, whatever, I could pick apart every single thing done. And I promise you, I could find things that could improve. But I don't. I just learn from it and I compile it from watching a multitude of things like that and reading and, and meeting dogs that are just so good. I'm like, how did you train this dog? And it's just the funniest thing how different people do different things. But uh, I'm not going to tell you, you got to do it like we're doing out here. But you didn't hesitate to tell me that we should do it like you do. Well, I just, <laughs> sorry, I was a huge woodpecker. Yes, it was. Um, I have a joke there. The other thing too, guys, <laughs> we're all human we're all human we're not going to do things perfect the first time every time i'm sure you guys made mistakes in your life i'm just throwing it out there i don't do everything perfectly the first time every time no you don't i'm quitting this perfectionism profession i don't do everything perfectly the first time it's just how it is so it's part of learning let us learn that's all i have to say <laughs> and be nice about it yeah yeah be nice herc's doing great bruno's doing great these critters are doing great. Oh, you can't see them when I'm zoomed out that far. <laughs> These critters are doing great. Quite honestly, guys, I'm, I'm very pleased with the outcome of all of our training, everything we've put these guys through, the way that we treat them, the way that we, you know, is it stressful? Does it involve a lot of time investment? Yeah, it sure does, and it has, and it can wear on you, but it's just like last night when I went into the pen to have my cuddle session with Hercules and tell him how proud of him I was. That's the rewarding moment. When they do listen, they do learn. You know, they want Shannon and I to be happy, believe it or not. Maybe not the goats so much. The guineas, yeah, I don't know. But Herc and Bruno and Nala do. <laughs> that's, that's part of a dog's chemical makeup, right? They want to make their masters happy. And if that means Hercules not killing Bruno, that's what we're training toward. And so far, so good. And I think before you know it, here in the coming week or so, we're gonna have them out on the trail together and one, if not both of them, will be off leash. Hey, what's that falling from the sky right now? <laughs> I checked the weather app three times this morning and it never changed. I've got my lumber, my two by sixes and my OSB for the chicken coop sitting out here drying out because it's been wet from sitting out in the lumber yard and it's starting to come down. Oh, <laughs> it'll be short lived. It never fails. Every time we try to get started doing something, it starts raining. I mean, it's been this way for weeks. weeks. This Maybe. is the most wet spring I have seen in a long time. I think we said that last year too. <laughs> I feel like this, this year it's way more. It's the more we live out here in it and have things to get done that we recognize like every drop of rain yeah. that comes. Well, you know what I should have done? I should have moved rain catchment further up on my project list. We could have uh, thousands yeah. of gallons of water at this point. Yeah, we could. We'll get there. We're, it's all a part of this. And one day at a time, yep. I'm going to have a couple of excellently trained dogs three if you include Nala because she's perfect. She is perfect. And we'll have some more projects done in due time. We have ambitions and we have like, what's the word I'm thinking of? I like ambitions. Plans? We have plans, we have dreams, we have goals, but it's all one day at a time. Yeah, and the goats seem to like mess them all up. I don't know how or why, but somehow they do. Even sure, though blame they're, Spruce. They're down here doing a great job right now helping me clear this underbrush out. It's so funny. Blue, the poor thing, she gets used as a step stool all the time. <laughs> Especially earlier, by her babies, huh? Well, and even Spruce. Earlier, Spruce was on top of her back. I'm like, you poor girl. Here's a testament to who's been here a long time. If you guys know right where they are right at the moment, we're not going to spin the camera around. You know about where we are. You might be concerned like, hey, isn't there barbed wire down there going from that tree over to a T-post and it's drug through the edge of the woods and stuff? Yes, there was but I've snipped it all, coiled it up, got it out of there. I've got it in my metal recycle bin over there. So they can now clean down here and not worry about inadvertently running into barbed wire. You know who went into the woods the furthest just a minute ago? Who? Grazy Daisy. Oh, shocker. She was shocker. all the way down close to the bottom of the ravine.
that's from that branch right there, isn't it? I was right. You better get out of here. You guys see this right here? I'm just now recovering. This is just a small fraction of uh, poison ivy I've been fighting, but all the goats are right here. They're eating it, they're in it. This right here in my face, those are massive poison ivy leaves. I was just looking at it going up one of the oaks over there that they're eating. This is where I'm getting it. I'm you better not getting get out of here. I'm mowing. It's these stinking goats bringing it to me. That can't be poison. Is that poison ivy? Okay, I want to point this out because we just, just now realized this is what was happening. But check this out. We thought this was a little tree right here. If you look close, it is a poison ivy vine climbing up a T post. Pretending to be a tree. Pretending to be a tree and branching out. I, I, I just want to show you guys, we've shown you this app before. It's called Picture This. They try to make you pay for it. We have never paid for it in the couple years we've been using it. And unless it's wrong, I just snap a picture. It says, scanning poison ivy. Bad deal. You better get out of here, babe. <laughs> I really should. I don't, I'm not as allergic as I was when I was a kid, but when I was a kid, just being this close to it, I would come away with it undoubtedly. I love how they just follow us. I know, poison ivy bombs is what they are. <laughs> I can't touch you guys. I'm not loving any of you today. Sorry. Watch out, Spruce, watch out. That's a good boy. You're so good, Herc. Blue came on back in the pen. Come on, everybody. Come on. Keep coming in. All right, well, I didn't touch any goats, which was really hard because I was holding the feed scoop to begin with. But, I did, but I'm gonna just go wash my hands real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna go have to use some of my special poison ivy soap to get all the oils off and stuff. The ticks are also coming in thick today. Yeah. I, they're seed ticks, lone star ticks, deer ticks. Well, it's probably since we were down there in that real thick roughage down in there. I agree, but I, mean, I was just walking around feeding and it, I would look down at my hand and there'd be a random lone star just walking up my, <laughs> ugh. They know the weather's nice too and the warmth is coming. Country life. All right, well, everybody got their grays in. Herc did a great job out here off leash. This evening, we'll probably get Mr. Bruno out with everybody to do their evening grazing. A little more training between he and Hercules. Things are coming along nicely. I see the warm weather coming in. So I think it's time to start shifting gears. Keeping it cool in that camper for the princess. Yes, yeah. Not a problem, we got a plan. Yep. Guys, we love and appreciate each and every one of you. We thank you for coming on this journey with us. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to KNS Get Out. <laughs> Kyle got on a soapbox today and <laughs> talked to way too many people about what only 30 of you said, or 50. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Let's get back to it. <laughs>